regarding introduction to the subject signals and systems. Before getting on to the relevance of this subject for engineers, we should know what is the meaning of signals and systems. When we talk about signal, signal is defined as any entity that would convey some information. System is defined as a block or a device that would process that information. Things are always better understood with examples. So I'll start by giving you some examples of signals. I'm able to communicate some information to you. That information is again a signal and that signal is called as a speech signal. So the first example that we have is a speech signal. Now you are able to grasp some information through this video. The information that you are hearing is again a signal and that signal is called as an audio signal. Now, whatever I am communicating from this place to you is through a video. This video will again form a signal because it is conveying some information. So the third kind of a signal that we have is a video signal. The last example further, you might be finding something written on top of this video. Or when you are opening this video, you are opening this with certain name. That name is a data form. So we have another kind of a signal that can also be called as a data signal. All these signals occupy different frequency ranges and the frequency ranges are as this. Now, for those of you who do not understand what is the meaning of frequency, what we can do is we can consider the total frequency spectrum as a row. So this is the total frequency spectrum that we have. Now this total frequency band or spectrum will have different frequencies. We can call them as lanes. So we have a road that has got different lanes. Now when a vehicle is moving on a road, it moves in a particular lane. Similarly, when data is moving or when we are transmitting data from one place to the other, the data will be transmitting in certain particular lanes and those lanes or the pathways for the information are called as Let's now try and understand how a signal can be represented mathematically. For that, let us consider a system and that system takes different voltages at different points of time. So we can plot a graph between time and the voltage that the system takes at different points of time. So here we have voltage V. This voltage is a function of time T. The time here is a variable which is an independent variable. But when you look at this V, this V value or the voltage value would depend upon the time. Therefore, V the variable which is a dependent variable. Now this variable V, it depends upon a single variable. Therefore, this kind of a signal is called as a one-dimensional signal. The next example could be when you look at a photo or a picture, that picture will have different brightness levels. The brightness here is B1 and this brightness is a function of x-axis and y-axis. The brightness here, suppose it is B2, this will be a function of x-axis and y-axis. So we have brightness B as a function of x and y-axis. These x and y variables are the independent variable, whereas v, which depends upon these variables, is a dependent variable. When a variable is dependent upon two other variables, it is called as two-dimensional signal. The next example could be a video signal. A video is ultimately made up of running pictures. So what do we have this picture, which itself is dependent upon two variables, x and y. So in a video also we'll have two variables x and y. Furthermore, this picture is running with time to make a video. So we'll have a one more variable which will be t. This video here is dependent upon three variables x, y and t which are independent variables. And this v is a dependent variable on x, y and t. And this kind of a signal is called as a 
three dimensional signal because it depends upon three variables a signal that depends upon more than a one variable are called as multi variable signal so we have a two dimensional and three dimensional signal which are multi variable signals And when you look at a one-dimensional signal, this one-dimensional signal is called as a single variable signal. For our discourse, signals and systems will be restricting ourselves to single variable signals only. To have a more elaborate view on signals and systems, let us consider a set of blocks. That make up the communication system. So we have these blocks that make up the communication systems. The first block is a transducer. A transducer is actually a device that converts one form of energy into other. So when we want to transmit a speech signal, we have to convert it into electrical signal. This can be done using a transducer. So we have a speech signal. That is converted by the transducer into an electrical signal. Now, this electrical signal that is obtained from the transducer is a low frequency signal, and a signal that is to be transmitted has to be a high frequency signal. So, we use a modulator to convert a low frequency signal into a high frequency signal. This high frequency signal is transmitted. At large values of amplitude to longer distances. So we have an amplifier to do that. So these three blocks make up the system which is the transmitter side of the system. The signal that is transmitted by this amplifier will be received at the receiver's end. So we have this as the receiver's end. Again, the received signal is amplified to detect the information from it. So we amplify this signal. The signal which was at low high frequencies as received will be converted into low frequencies by the demodulator circuit. And then the low frequency signal which is an electrical signal will be converted again back into a speech signal or an audio signal that can be heard by the user at the receiver side. So these blocks that are processing the signals are the systems and the information that is being transmitted from this end to this end is the signal. 